Hello, my name is Peter May and I'm the Principal Investigator on our Palliative and End of Life Care in Ireland project, or PELCHI for short. We've worked with the Irish Hospice Foundation to launch this report, Dying and Death in Ireland. What do we routinely measure? How can we improve? Hi, I'm Saray Matthews and I'm the lead researcher and author on this report, which is the first piece of work that we're launching from our PELCHI project. This report aims to improve knowledge and understanding of the current patterns of experience of people at a national level. We're excited to walk you through some of the key report findings today and these stretch across seven headings. First heading is place of death. Between 2013 and 2018, hospitals accounted for 40% of deaths on average. Home accounted for 23%. Long stay residential facilities, such as community hospitals and nursing homes, also accounted for 23% and hospices accounted for 7%. For most groups, hospital is the most common place of death, but people aged 85 and over more often die in long stay residential care facilities than in hospitals. 40% of deaths in hospitals is lower than most other countries, but in the context of evidence that people prefer to die at home if they can access appropriate supports, it should be possible to reduce that number further with better community and home care services. The high numbers of people dying in both hospitals and long stay residential facilities highlights that end of life care is a core function of these settings. We must ensure strong palliative care provision across settings to support good end of life experiences. Second is leading causes of death. Between 2013 and 2018, cancer accounted for 31% of deaths on average. Diseases of the circulatory system accounted for 30%. Diseases of the respiratory system accounted for 13%. Mental and behavioural disorders accounted for 5%. Diseases of the nervous system accounted for 5%. Diseases of the digestive system accounted for 4%. And external causes of injury and poisoning accounted for 4%. Over the period, cancer replaced diseases of the circulatory system as the leading cause of death in Ireland, partly reflecting a long-term trend of declining heart-related mortality here. Mental and behavioural disorders deaths increased by 61% over the period as prevalence and identification of dementia grew. People aged 65 and over accounted for 82% of all deaths in 2018. This varies across different categories, ranging from 77% of deaths caused by cancer to 99% for deaths caused by mental and behavioural diseases. Third is cancer as a specific cause of death. We group different types of cancers into nine categories. Four cancer categories accounted for over three quarters of cancer deaths in 2018. These were gastrointestinal, respiratory, breast and gynecological, and neurological and testicular cancers. Of the 9,466 cancer deaths in 2018, 77% were people aged 65 and over. This age group accounts for a minimum of half of deaths in each cancer category. Females accounted for a higher proportion of deaths in two categories, this was breast and gynecological and cancer of unknown primary. And males accounted for the majority of deaths in all other cancer categories. Fourth is dementia as a specific cause of death. We grouped dementia deaths into three categories. Overall, dementia deaths increased from 6% to 8% nationally between 2013 and 2018. Likely contributors are increases in life expectancy, dementia prevalence, and better reporting of dementia on death notification forms. Nearly all deaths caused by dementia were among older age groups and the proportion of deaths in each age category increased as age increased. Women accounted for two thirds of the deaths caused by dementia, highlighting the importance of promoting gender sensitive approaches in end of life and palliative care services for people with dementia. Fifth is, is specialist palliative care provision. We examined three main types of provision between 2013 and 2019 inpatient, community and daycare using the HSE's Specialist Palliative Care Minimum data set. Service provision saw an increase in new patients across inpatient and community settings, but saw a decrease in daycare. The majority of new patients receiving inpatient, community and day specialist palliative care had cancer as a primary diagnosis. However, over the period, the proportion of people with cancer diagnoses receiving these services has decreased and non-cancer diagnoses have increased. In 2019, individuals aged 65 and over accounted for approximately three quarters of the total number of new patients across each setting. Before being admitted to an inpatient specialist palliative care unit, 2019 data showed that 52% were 
were admitted from an acute hospital and 47% were admitted from their own or a carer's home. This is a reversal in trend compared to 2013. Two thirds of new patients admitted to inpatient units died there with most of the remainder discharged home. Dr. Peter May will now run through the rest of the key headings and discuss the implications of our findings. Our sixth subject of interest was adult emergency admissions to acute hospital. We looked at admissions for indications of advanced medical illness and end of life care need between 2013 and 2017. Cancer, major organ failure and Alzheimer's disease and related dementias made up over half of adult emergency admissions to hospital in this period. These admissions account heavily for length of stay and discharges ending in death. Patterns of length of stay and discharge locations are pretty consistent over time and across different hospital groups. It's clear that the total volume of admissions with serious illness far exceeds the capacity of specialist palliative care services in acute hospitals to see all of these patients. Weaknesses in data recording and infrastructure mean that we don't know how many hospital inpatients receive palliative care nationally and we can't follow hospital patients out of the hospital to understand their trajectories of experience and healthcare use following discharge. Finally, let's consider the main implications of this work. The aim of the report was to improve knowledge and understanding of end of life experience in Ireland. What do we know from data we already collect and how can we improve in future? We have found that Ireland has good basic data infrastructure that allows us to describe important indicators like place of death, cause of death and specialist palliative care access. And Ireland performs quite well on these indicators compared to other high income countries. The proportion of people dying in hospital is relatively low by international standards. Deaths from cardiovascular disease are falling and palliative care activity is strong and growing. At the same time, there are important areas for improvement. Hospitals and nursing homes care for large numbers of people in the last year of life, but we don't necessarily think of these places as end of life care providers when this is a key function. We see fast growing prevalence of dementia as a cause of death, but we don't really know to what extent that's a genuine increase and to what extent it's simply better identification of that disease. Also important, our understanding is only as good as the available data and we found a number of important limitations in the data currently collected. We have descriptive variables like place and cause of death, but no quality indicators to evaluate an individual's personal experience. People with advanced medical illness access healthcare in lots of different settings, but we can't follow them across settings and across the trajectory of disease in the data because we don't have a unique patient identifier. And we don't know enough about palliative care provision, particularly in hospitals and in non-specialist settings like GPs and out of hour services. The number of people living and dying with serious medical illness will more or less double in Ireland over the next 30 years. If Ireland is to provide people at end of life and their families with the care they need and deserve, then we must continue to grow not only capacity of services, but also the data that we collect so that this can inform service planning and resource allocation. All of the findings described in these videos can be found in the report. If you want to find out more, please visit the website of the Irish Hospice Foundation, hospicefoundation.ie, or our project website, pelci.ie. Thank you for listening.